And it's Baseball Night in New York here on Geico Sports Night. Anthony McCarron, Salakata, Mark Melissa. Let's talk about first, that first piece of news that I mentioned, Brad Osmus. Your thoughts on his potential fit with the New York Mets organization, Anthony? Oh, Doug, I feel like it's uh, the Mets casting a wide net now. I mean, we've heard that they're going to be very methodical in this process and see who's out there and, and what they have to say for themselves. And, and, you know, you mentioned it, that he might fit the mold for Sandy Alderson. I mean, he's a Dartmouth guy, and so is Sandy. And he may be a little more analytical and, and the sabermetric stuff that the Mets like to use uh, more than Terry Collins. And, and that would seem to be a logical step for the Mets to take to look for a manager like that because they do rely on those sort of things so well so he could be you know he could be a guy who could be in the mix um, you know his team sort of flatlined this year which is not really that great I think they finished like 11 and 34 they got the first pick in the draft coming up I mean that doesn't really that's not really a sparkling you know uh, star on your resume when that happens but uh, you know we'll see what ha what happens with this guy yeah, he does nothing for me, honestly. Uh, <laughs> Brett Osmus, bring him in. I, I, I get you have to want to and talk to and interview anyone that's out there, but the other guys, Bob Guerin, Chip Hale, you go down the list. I mean, I'd rather give Cora an opportunity than what I just witnessed Brett Osmus do out in Detroit. It's not like he went out there and did something completely different or got that team or got an extra a little juice out of that Tigers team, Sal. I mean, Osmus is fine, and I get the analytics aspect and the Ivy League aspect all well and good. Here's what you need to do, though. I I mean, we can debate about the manager all you want. It really comes down to the talent of the players. So whether it be Osmus, whether it be Guerin, whether it be Chip Hale, it does not matter. If the Mets don't improve the roster, I don't care who's managing the team. They're not going to be a winning baseball club in 2018. Yeah, and the other thing is when you look at the list of names out there, I don't feel that there's one that's going to get the Mets fans really excited. I mean, Brad Osmus, to me as a player, he always agitated me as an opposing fan. He came across like that as a manager as well. He doesn't seem like a likable guy. I never met him personally I'm not saying he's not likable but I mean you watch him he just seems like a guy who could get under your skin I'm not so sure that would be the best attitude to have as a manager if you want to get the players to play hard for you and clearly in Detroit there were certain issues there so yeah whether he's good I like that he's experienced I like that he's a former catcher but he doesn't I'm with you Moose I'm not gonna get all excited about Brad Osmus being named could be an interesting diversion for Sandy Alderson though he had the likable players coach in Terry Collins the players manager and now maybe he goes in a different direction again the stats the analytics are so important and the Dartmouth connection, as you mentioned, Anthony. All right, let's talk about the other piece of news I mentioned at the top of the show. The potential move to Syracuse that the Mets are reportedly going to announce tomorrow going into the 2019 season. It would seem like this is correcting a mistake, Anthony. Would would you say that's an accurate Oh, uh, absolutely, Doug. That is exactly right. You know, I mean, it was really a disaster for the Mets to have their team, their Triple A team, so far away because th these guys would have would come after flying cross country and they're exhausted and they're expected to perform, you know, possibly that night when they arrive in the major leagues. And it's not fair to them. And it certainly is no good for the organization and the team to have players in that condition doing it. Uh, you know, and then that affects whether you decide to call a guy up. Well. You know that you know they played yeah. last night in Las Vegas, and you know we're you know we're in Miami tonight. You know, can we really call this guy and expect him to be there? And, and you know, taking red eye flights is not the way you get your your players in, in the best shape possible to play. So this is going to be huge for them because they can start to manipulate the roster in a better, more effective way for the for the big league. Well, team. it made no sense. I mean, honestly, if you're an East Coast Major League team to have your AAA affiliate out west, I mean that that makes no sense whatsoever. So yeah, I mean this is correcting uh, a bad decision in years gone by and it will take effect in 2019. That's all well and good, just in case an injury happens, as we have seen with the Mets at every major league club. You can call somebody up and get them to New York or wherever you might be on the East Coast, potentially, and do a lickety split. I mean, Sal, this is – and plus, you look at the PCL. It's a complete hitter's league where the numbers are blown out of order about good what point. guys do offensively. Wait, th no, this had to happen. I mean, this is, this is a huge, huge move for this organization moving forward. And forget about, like you guys are talking about, getting a player here to fill in, whatever – evaluating the players through your system at the AAA level. That is a huge deal in, in Vegas. As you said, you can't evaluate them fairly. You don't know what's going on with the balls flying out of there. Not to mention that they're all the way across the country. It made zero sense. I'm just, I, I don't care how it happened, why it happened. I'm glad that it finally is being rectified. This is a big step for this organization. I'm sure it'll be easier on scouts to evaluate offensive numbers and pitching numbers as well. Also easier for us because we've been looking at these offensive numbers, looking at, at hitters that come to the big leagues and look overmatched. Pitchers who have ERAs north of five at that level and then come here and look much better. It's going to be interesting to see how this changes things.